Hi, Arlen. Hi, Thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. Have you heard of the podcast? Have you heard of what we do? Anything? Well, my agent wrote me way back when, when I was um, in the dead of taxes and all this other stuff. And I was like, this sounds amazing. Thank you. And yeah, I can't believe there's this huge library. There is, yeah. All these so scripts. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we I started a, a podcast basically to make it more accessible for everybody. I love that. Uh, for people that maybe are not able to read or have a hard time reading or are dyslexic. I, I or, so yeah. we wanted to make sure everybody would be able to dive into the world of Motherland Fort Salem fan fiction. So that's what we did. And uh, now we're here and it's huge. <laughs> it's a, oh another full time job, but I love it. Okay. So um, I decided to reach out and see if basically I wanted to um, thank my readers that are putting in the work to get these stories out there and my uh, the listeners that keep this going. And so that's pretty much why I asked you to come and talk to me so I can give yeah. it back to everybody that loves you so much. So, oh, so again, I am so honored. Much. I'm honored to be able to be in any way helping to promote this awesome project because I think accessibility is so important. It really is. Everyone deserves a space to be part of and yeah I know that a lot of the community motherland community exists outside of the show it's in discords and all these other spots oh, yes. and everywhere yeah so I've, and so, so where are, are you where are you in the world I, I always love to know oh I'm in the Netherlands actually yes, yes I'm in the Netherlands it's so exciting I know it's crazy oh to be God. talking to so many different people from all over the world yes yeah that's amazing it's I think it's a one of the things that love that I love about this community mm -hmm. I have so many friends within this community that are all over the world and we have like weekly meetups and like we just talk every day and yeah oh. so that's another reason why the, the fan fiction to me is so important because it keeps the show going even yeah, though it's it ended it won't ever end for us because people keep creating and people keep putting out these amazing pieces of art and fan fiction and so yeah that's another reason why we all love fan fiction so much yeah and also so, fan fiction does get produced it does turn into things too so yeah there's, there's a, several I uh I don't know in the motherland Fort Salem but in other fandoms it like they actually got to like publish their their works after yeah. it's big and yeah that's, yeah another thing like uh I think fan fiction used to get pretty much a bad rep because people thought it was weird and like kind of like eh. and mm -hmm. now now you see like these authors come out of it that are like super talented and amazing writers and yeah. just reading their work and then with our favorite characters the way they play with them and you know go beyond the show or beyond what's on tv is Absolutely. just amazing so yeah um nikta is actually in about 296 fan fictions <laughs> oh my god about I say about because that's what Nick is tagged in oh my god there's okay. probably more that they're not tagged in but yeah 296 wow. that they're a character in uh amazing. I know it's amazing uh one of the favorite characters to write about and explore and go deeper into um but on the show we don't really know a whole lot I mean we know what we know and what we've seen obviously but yeah. like what do you think that Nicta's childhood looked like? Oh, well, I, I, I love, I love to, one of my favorite things when I dive into characters is to write backstory. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Amazing. Cause it's kind of like also a form of writing too. It's like, oh yeah, definitely. And, and sometimes you get auditions and you have no idea, like they give you so little Mm -hmm. to work with or, or it's a it's a secret project so that you, it's like so you only have your imagination to play with yes um so maybe that there's an element of that but I I wrote in my mind extensive mm -hmm. details about who this person was what they had lived mm -hmm. and also as the show progresses like the writers will also write some backstories sometimes it aligns sometimes it doesn't I shared some of it with Elliot when we were when we met on zoom mm -hmm. and and he was like, yeah, because um, I wanted to understand the darkness. And I think that um, everyone goes through pain and all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. And maybe that's why people have connected to Nikta, because um, 
there is a complexity to that to that darkness mm -hmm. um and um I definitely connect to it personally in some Same. ways yeah and um whether it's actually written the page like you said like I I, I try to portray what I've created mm -hmm. in here <laughs> yeah um, um so her childhood I uh, I saw it as a very kind of like um, more challenging childhood without having access and closeness with her parents and what had happened between her and her parents. Mm -hmm. um, I had at some point, um, I was thinking about the being really connected to her mom and um, that her mom had been part of the military in some way and uh, was being tortured and and Nikta could feel that oh could, that that's how she connected to her she could feel that pain from her mother and um and the mom within the torture wanted to um to end it end her life to be able to because it was so much and and that's what Nikta could feel that's where that darkness comes from yeah so she could feel the person's desire to not be around anymore that's intense. And so I was like, okay, so if that is how, this is how I had imagined mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. connected to the work, to that magic of yes. being so intensely connected to someone's pain that they don't want to be around anymore. And in, and figuring that out. And then when, when Nick just started to figure out that she was a witch and she had these powers and stuff, um, emotionally, when she would get emotional, mm -hmm. that power would come and, and in un, a series of, of unfortunate events, um, she started to discover that power live. Yeah. So beginnings, I was like, you know, I, I played with the idea that maybe it was like a cat. And then it was, and then it became other people that she loved and stuff. And so that was a huge thing to carry. Mm -hmm. And when she's in the military you know it, it's a really dark thing to know that you can make people kill themselves because that was the one nugget That's, I got yeah in my callback oh just, she can make people kill just, themselves. You know, she her power is that so I was like <sighs> how does someone get there and um yeah so I think with, with that um that's how I built a lot of it and then that's how I was able to build the strength of the betrayal between Nikta and Alder because mm -hmm. it was such a huge thing to share that very personal very and normal. why that was yeah exactly to be like yeah. and this is what and this is what I've done and I don't want to do that again right and um and so when she feels that betrayal from all different someone she idealized someone that she connected to on so many different layers of mm -hmm. levels um it really really tears her apart and I think that's interesting when you look at like cycles of abuse and violence and stuff like that. Sometimes you end up doing the thing that hurt you. And so I think Nikta really didn't want to ever do that again. But in some way you get kind of lost in that too. Yeah, you get lost in that darkness too. Yeah. yeah. So that was what I had built for her in her childhood. And in my in my creation, I had also written that she had accidentally um, killed her dad in an argument so it was just like it had started small and then it was just like you know you don't Got have to darker and darker as so it was just it was huge and so yeah and then you couple it with the writers when the writers wrote about her grandma I was just like okay yeah this still like it still works you know it still works mm, yeah in my mind. um uh but yeah I think that no one is a villain for no reason or whatever it True, means to be yeah. villain. there's always something there and and I I have a huge belief in the capacity of people to change and grow and so I hope that whatever I was able to give to the character was the nugget that there is a there's a sliver of something right. that connected to yeah well I think you definitely succeeded also in um beginning a character as you know as you said a villain because that's basically mm -hmm. how Nikta entered our screens yes and then for people to basically still fall in love with this character mm -hmm. towards the end and you know see through the darkness and see the good in that person mm -hmm. I mean you did it beautifully you and Candace obviously together but like wonderfully done because 
one of like just amazing I love I love Nick's storyline I love the arc mm-hmm. I love the where you can see that darkness and that pain because I mean all darkness and all anger and at least m- my personal opinion it comes from pain it comes from a, a place of pain or the unknown or fear yeah and I think you portray that so well playing Nikta and mm-hmm. so realistic and also the way that Nikta has a hard time forgiving themselves yes they're constantly like they're holding on to I'm bad I'm, I'm a bad person mm-hmm. and then other people coming in and make like especially tally i think it's like listen you're not all bad like it's not Mm -hmm. you're not a horrible person you've had a horrible experience or a horrible life or you're not all bad and i think that that is also wonderful to see that relationship between uh nikta and tally Mm -hmm. Um, obviously people would get really mad if i don't ask about nikta and alder (laughs) (laughs) because i think that is one of the biggest um ships yeah for Nikta um so what is, really interesting I thought it was Tally and Nikta but it's I mean it's both awesome. and then also the thruple is Oka, it's also a thing oh yes so yeah you have Nick Nick uh Nick Alley and then you have Nick Talder and Nick Alder which are the three top ships that mm-hmm. include Nikta there's also uh uh let's say Nick Nick Ektra Nick yes. <laughs> Nikta. there you go sorry Dutch <laughs> No, Nick is it. also um, a very popular ship to be written mm. about. Amazing. Obviously, a lot of um, ships for Nick to, they're like, sh- they mean, go with anybody. It's fine. <laughs> I love that. I love I that. do too. I mean, it's great. You know, if it's just, why not? Like, let her be with whoever. Yes, great. absolutely. Also, because she is such a, a, just a well-written character, I think, that mm. it makes you like, okay, well, I see that. Also, mm-hmm. Nick is very flirtatious. So I think yes, it is. <laughs> I think anybody that looks at any scene with Nick is in and they're like, Yeah, you know, <laughs> what's going on? But yeah, yeah, let's get into uh Nick Alder a bit because it's yeah. one of the biggest things. And yes, ma- yes. mainly because, you know, we know there is history there. We've, we've yes. seen it, it's on screen, yes. it's it's there. Mm-hmm. We know that there was a possibility they were written to be ex-lovers. Mm-hmm. do you think that that's accurate did you play Nikta with that in mind honestly when I got when I had built the whole thing like I had initially I had written it as um in my mind mm-hmm. is that there was like an idealization of this person I knew that in the script it said that this person was what Nikta wanted to be because mm-hmm. I got the sides for the Liberia mm-hmm. um and uh so I was just like you know there's also an element of motherhood there too but all these things get conflated to like you know a lot of your childhood traumas are also attached to your biggest attractions Mm -hmm. and um and then I got on set and Lynn and I connected and it just it was just organic like the the intensity between us and the connection because I came with the Nick to that I'd been and there was this you know really kind of more scared mm-hmm. <clears throat> the Liberian Nick is uh someone who's not as secure and sure of herself not to say that like le- later Nick is more secure but later Nick is better at playing it playing know? they are yeah but when they're younger it's just a lot more the um trying to prove themselves you know Mm -hmm. even to show that magic in that way it's such like an awkward thing to be like oh by the way here's my magic you know like check out these bottles but um yeah and and Lynn just met me with that too so when we locked eyes in that first scene it was just it was just easy and it was that's what it was Mm -hmm. and I was like "Mm, okay (laughs) right and yeah, I, I think so, everybody went, hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, you feel it too. That they're yeah. just like, it's a mix of all those things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And as an actor, it's just really juicy to 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 not go in with an expectation and just feed off of the other person that's playing. Whatever's happening in the moment. And things come up. And I think that's also how people connect in life. You know, you think you're going to feel a certain way and then you 
it goes in a completely different way. So I think uh, I lived that uh, with Lynn and then later talking to writers and stuff, I found out that that had been already written before. Mm -hmm. It had been kind of, they'd swayed away from it. Yet um, it was still coming up between us, regardless of whether it was written in the script or not. And um, so I think Lynn and I, we didn't necessarily try and go in one direction or the other. I think when we went in, we just went in with whatever was happening. Whatever happened, yeah. Humans acting. So, yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm I'm a very moment to moment person. I don't I don't like to pre plan. So, I think whatever comes up to people, you mm-hmm. know, that's true for you, and that's going to be true for any project. Right. The same with the writing, you know, as much as people want to write a certain story, what what then gets translated through the acting, through the editing, and then the, in your minds and in the imaginations of right. these other writers, because whether or not you're actually writing it, everyone is a writer when you're mm-hmm. watching. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Something. You make up your own stories in your mind as you watch it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think those are all valid. I think they're all valid. Mm-hmm. in all their well like someone might be like oh wow they had a really mother daughter thing or they had really this but I'm just like whatever connects to you and makes you feel the story that's what it is yeah so, very true as it is for me as an actor so right it also kind of ties back into making that betrayal so much worse for uh for Nikta yeah. yes yes like, absolutely because yeah. I mean if they're just they just know of each other it's that's still gonna hurt Oh no. But if there's something more there, whatever it might be, whatever that relationship might have been, Mm -hmm. the betrayal is gonna come in yeah so much harder than it would have. Yeah, beautiful. Um when did Liberia happen? I'm bad in details. Do you know? Because like we we were I was talking to my friends about this, and we really don't know how old Nikta is. So Liberia happened when Nikta was around 20. Okay. And then for 30 years. The spree okay. is built. Okay. So you meet Nikta when Nikta's 50. Okay. Nice. Later. But sporting a younger face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Very true. <laughs> you just wonder because you're like, when did this happen? And they might have mentioned it in the show. I'm not going to lie, mm-hmm. but I'm bad on like years and dates. And they like, I'm not sure if they do mention it in the show. I don't either. I don't think they're that specific about the timing because but, uh, of, you know yeah. the, the liberia was a flashback so you wonder like yeah. how far back does that go and then how long Especially because nick alder is so old it really exactly so i mean did it. she meet alder when they were like t- like was alder 20 years old when they met like no so well they, it was she's about 50 you say timing wise this is when um when enslaved black witches were were g- getting freedom and so that that in the history, I mean, there's a mix of like ties to our own, to our own history. History. but this is when people were were gaining their their freedom and right, uh, and yeah, and then they were sent on the mission to g- recruit these witches, and these witches were like, hell no, <laughs> hell no, we want to be free. We don't want to yeah. be in the military right now, right. Um, and yeah, so that's timing wise. So I don't know what that aligns with our time, but um. Well, I mean, if she in the show, she's at the end of this series. She's about fifty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So right. yeah, she's yeah. probably fifty in her fifties. Yeah. What do you think Nikta did right after three ten? Because the last time we see Nikta, yeah, they're walking off with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. um. And then everybody became a witch. Yeah, everyone becomes a witch. Um, I mean, <laughs> so what's I, Nikta up to? <laughs> what's Nikta up to? Well, Nikta's gonna work for Wade. Oh, okay. Like she's kind of like had a little kind of chat with Wade. You see at the wedding, Nikta's right? Yes. Wade, yes, and yes. Kind of like, yo, I know you're not gonna give me my <laughs> clear my name, but also like I want to fight this. Um, mm-hmm. what can we do? Right. Yes. Um. But, you know, in my perspective, it's always going to be, you know, within Nikta's realm of morality. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's going to be military wise, but more kind of like a maybe secret thing. Nikta can change faces, obviously. You know, it's a huge super spy. 
and has been around and is very well connected all over the world. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of connecting people, in terms of getting all that, I think that NICTA definitely could be used to be doing some positive things and seeing as Wade has shown a level of critical thought. Because I think that's really huge for NICTA. Yeah. Uh, to, not someone who's just following the rules because the rules are there. Um, but being like, does Doing this right. make sense in this moment? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are rules, but like at the end of the day, we're human beings or we're people, we're witches or, you know, so can we think outside of that? And so Wade clearly proves that capacity True. Um, yes. to like fall out of the bureaucracy and actually be like, okay, I'm going to weigh moment to moment. So for Nikta, that's appealing to, to connect to. Do you think she's trying to use that opportunity to make the wrongs right? I do you think Nikta like thinks she's done wrong? I think that Nikta um realizes that her methods might have been misunderstood. Um and that that strays away from the goal. Mm -hmm. of what she wanted and I think that in season three she was in the beginning of understanding what act what she actually did because she was so ingrained into it it was such a big part right everything she was doing every single day every single moment she was thinking this and for her like it was like take Alder down like it was like steps but it was like Alder was also kind of clouding the mission too mm -hmm. um so there's a, I still think there's a lot of space for Nick to, to grow. I think that Nick just still has to really come to terms with lives that have been lost. It's specifically in the way that she didn't want them to be lost. Right. And so, and now everyone's a witch. So that, that puts into a whole play about like, you know, what is human? What is witch? Who is, there's so much to still dig into. Mm -hmm. And if people are going to want to identify as witches, if people are going to be trying to get rid of their witchhood. Yeah. You know, like, what people or people are gonna be like, well, this is amazing. When people have all this power, there's so much opportunity. Yeah. And and then there's a lot to come up for Nikta because people that she's killed, families that she's killed are now witches too. So I think there's so much to dig into oh, and and more um for Nikta to to break down and understand about who she is, what 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 has been done and what the next path forward is and I'm not Arlen is not Nikta so you know I have my own growth in my life so mm -hmm. I can be like you know <laughs> acceptance you know really looking at who you are looking at what you have and 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 being like I can't change the past I can just mm -hmm. do what I can when I'm doing this moment and as I move forward um I don't know if Nikta's there yet but um if she's ready for that yeah exciting to 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 continue to delve into that um it's such a it's such an interesting series and there's so many little nuggets so interesting details. yeah there's so much to like build in this world so mm -hmm. like i i really understand why fans want to continue seeing more oh of yeah it. and they do the like surface you know has been hit and there's yes. so much I actually spoke to uh, Diana a couple days ago, and we oh, talked about this, about this too. I mean, amazing, amazing mm -hmm. woman. Um, and um, they were pretty much saying the same thing that, um, you know, we, you could have, we could have gone so much further mm. with this series. I mean, fans talk a lot about spinoffs or like, mm -hmm. you know, another series that continues where this left of like, mm -hmm. call it something else. Don't call it motherland, but call it something yeah. else. And like, uh, cause there's so much, there's so much still that could be told uh, mm -hmm. from this series, which, you know, which makes it great for fanfic writers because absolutely dig in people. Yeah. Right. You know, it's yeah, great. Keep, keep um, going. if you could see Nikta in any other alternate universe, think high school drama, think zombie apocalypse thing. Oh my God. I don't anything. What would you love to see Nikta in? like drop her in a high school drama how dark could that get <laughs> but the question is also like what period of nikta yeah you know, very true like ooh, nikta like 50 nikta 20 because like nikta 20's got some 
angst. <laughs> I love Nick good Nick Simpson also has angst, but it's like a different kind. Give me all the angst. <laughs> oh my God. Nick to 20. Where could you put Nick to 20? I really mess things up. <laughs> really go to town. Go to town. I mean, this is very weird. And it's also just kind of, this. It, I'm just saying the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. Go for but it. Shmiga Dune was filming right beside Motherland when we were filming in the woods. And yes. so we would walk through their set all the time. And it's like colorful and all these like really like, and it's such a wild, wacky world. Um, I feel like it would make zero sense for Nick to, to be there, but I think it, it could be hilarious. Okay. I also have seen this show. I've just seen like trailers for it. And, right. Um, like audition sides, but that would be really weird. I'm trying to think other shows that would be, um, I actually haven't watched television in like six months because I wanted to just like not do television. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, so I'm like, what's what's on? What's I don't know. On? Nick to Baton and Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh my god! Just, oh, I could also think about like other projects I've done. The Good Doctor, Nick to Baton, oh. and the Good can you imagine her bursting through the doors at a hospital <laughs> as a doctor maybe you know how the good doctors like or, or the, a lot of these doctor shows have like center on this like one doctor that's yeah. kind of a misfit whether it's uh -huh. the or other things or transplant which i've also done if nikta was the doctor it'd be so weird <laughs> <laughs> but also hilarious and she'd have her own methods she'd be like so, no, this is not how we do this. We're gonna do yeah. this more way. So connected. This person's unleashed. Should they call it the Bat Doctor? The Bat Doctor. Oh, there's so <laughs> many things to be made there's there. So <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be really funny. Or is like it... some kind of musical. Some kind of like weird, like musical. Like musical Hamilton. <laughs> oh my God! What would they do there? That'd be great. I yeah. don't know, just stir things up. <laughs> yeah, just get things. Get yeah, up. I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And we're at our end of our time. Um, we're at our time. I know. Thank you so much. And do you want to come back? I would love to come back. Thank you so much. I would love I to really be. appreciate it. Anytime, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll let you know ne my next round of free free time. Yes, please do. A pleasure. I'd I love so chatting with you.